G'day Ziggy D here and today I'll be giving you an overview of the gameplay and features of Child of Light. This game comes in from Ubisoft Montreal and combines elements from puzzle platformers and classic Japanese style RPGs. It does all of this within a painterly storybook style world as well. Child of Light represents another step in the growing trend of larger studios taking a break from their usual business to work on smaller games in order to try something new or a bit more artistic. The result is a game that is pretty different from any other game I've played recently, a rather unique experience really. Child of Light follows the adventures of Aurora, a girl who one night falls asleep only to awaken in a dreamlike land of Lemuria. Lemuria is a beautiful land, but it's also filled with creatures of the darkness, the result of the theft of the sun, moon and stars by the Black Queen. To lead her through the darkness on her quest in Lemuria, Aurora is accompanied by a small firefly named Igniculus, who can light the way and blind enemies with his luminescent behind. The gameplay in Child of Light falls into two areas, puzzle adventure platforming and the Japanese RPG style turn-based combat. The entire game can be played in co-op as well, with one player taking the lead role of Aurora, and the second player taking a support role as Igniculus. I tested this game entirely with co-op play with my girlfriend Amy playing Igniculus and myself playing Aurora on the PC using Xbox controllers. Alternatively, you can have one player using the keyboard and the other the mouse. In the adventure mode, you explore the painterly environment through a combination of running, jumping and even flying. Occasionally you must move crates, activate levers, or complete other small puzzles in order to overcome obstacles. A lot of the time this will require the cooperation of both Aurora and Igniculus, for example having Igniculus power an elevator platform so Aurora can obtain a crate. Sometimes you will also encounter a loot chest that can be opened only by one of the characters, like levered chests or diamonds that can only be opened via empowering by Igniculus. The result is that both players must communicate and work together to obtain treasures and proceed forwards, and there is always plenty for both players to do. While exploring, you'll also encounter glowing plants with wish ribbons tied to them. Activating these releases magical orbs that can be collected by either character. In your exploration, you'll eventually encounter something evil that you'll have to do battle with. Spiders, wolves, gargoyles, or even giants. This is where the game switches over to the classic turn-based RPG style combat. In combat mode, all allies and enemies are placed on a turn timer bar. When you reach the end, you are given the option to attack, defend, cast a spell, or use an item. Each of these actions has a cast time ranging from instant to a several seconds long. In this cast time, if you are attacked, you will be interrupted and lose your turn. However, you can do the same back to your enemies to prevent them from attacking you with clever timing. If you think that you will be attacked during this cast time, you can instead opt to defend to reduce damage and speed up your next turn timer significantly. All of this comes together to create a game of strategy in the combat where you must balance different cast times or defend actions to interrupt your opponents, deal damage and prevent yourself from being damaged. To add another layer of depth, the player controlling Igniculus can also shine light in a specific enemy's eyes to slow down their turn timer. Careful use of this feature can allow you to better plan for interrupts and to avoid being interrupted yourself. Throughout the battles in each chapter of the game, you'll learn new spells, obtain new items, and learn tactics that will all need to come together to defeat each of the major bosses. These bosses have unique attacks that you'll have to learn whilst applying your own strategies that you've already learned in order to win. After combat, you'll discover the other RPG elements that Child of Light has to offer as well. Your party members will gain XP and levels that will allow them to pick passive skills, spells and abilities from their own unique skill tree. In addition to this, there is also a crafting system for the Oculi, gems that provide different powers depending on what you socket them into. You can also combine multiple Oculi together to create new types with other effects. Both of these systems come together to allow you to not only improve the strength of Aurora and her companions, but also to build them in specific ways to better execute your combat strategies. For example, I invested heavily in extra speed for Rebella the Acrobat so I could use her to interrupt enemies better before they were able to attack. If you'd like to learn more about Child of Light, you can check out the link in the description below. The game is available on all major platforms including PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and the Wii U. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.